Hi, this is Kerry Artag with Wicked Stocks bringing you the daily Tesla report for Monday, April 17th, 2023. Before I click through all the charts, I just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. It does help us out in being found on YouTube and become a Wicked Stocks YouTube channel subscriber. Uh, it'll provide you notification each and every time new content has been uploaded. That includes the Tesla report and the Apple report. I'm going to jump to the charts right now. This is the big picture. I like to work my way from the long term into the day itself. Long term still anticipating 226.47, that descending long term channel top. We're a solid three months into the buy signal that occurred uh, when we settled above this band of channel uh, resistance. Now support well below the market in the 140s. We may slip into the 140s over the next two to three, three to five weeks. I'll get to that in a moment. We are in what I would consider to be a two to three week sell signal right now below key points. Uh, but if we settle back above, for instance, and I'll show this in a moment, 195.77, then this 226.47 level is likely within two or three weeks. Until then, holding below 188.36 will keep the market on the defensive near term. Near term for me is, you know, two to three weeks out. In fact, we can jump to that right now. Um, we did close below this speed line that had essentially contained the selling pressures from March uh, that is based actually on the July, sorry, January low and the February high, a rising two-thirds speed line. Um, and it is still there, still intact. We closed below it a week and a half ago, rallied back up to it, it backed off, but not in a meaningful way. And following the settlement below that speed line, uh, we also closed below a channel formation that today is at 188.36. So uh, if you've been following the Tesla report for the last week and a half, you know that I was holding out for a settlement below the channel bottom before uh, shifting into the bearish camp with regard to the two to three week outlook. So heavy below 188.36 into early May trade, anticipating 146.06 perhaps over that time horizon. I'll get to that in a moment. And inversely, if we were to rally over the next few days and close above 195.77, just the opposite, a clear rejection of a meaningful sell signal that should then yield that 226.47 long-term channel top I showed a moment ago, and again right here, within probably about two to three weeks. So this is the, the you know, the red arrow is a two to three week uh, down uh, dynamic, the two to three week, that's what we're in right now, below 188.36, and if we close above 195.77, the two to three week dynamic clips uh, uh, shifts clearly into the bullish camp. Now, um, also upside today, let's actually back up just a little bit that if we were to push above 188.36, um, we actually could test 195.77 intraday. And I also like that area because it's consistent with a recent one week channel top. So clearly for me, if we close back above 195.77, that would be a sign of strength as we move into May. That is a buy signal. If you are short the market, if you bought 145 or 150 out of the money puts recently, unfortunately, I would ask or recommend anyway that you liquidate that purchase and reach perhaps for 220 or 225 out of the money calls that don't expire for at least a month. I don't think it would take that long, two to three weeks, I think would be realistic for reaching the 226.47 level. 226.47 is now lining up with that longer term Fibonacci level that we came very close to testing in early February at 221 and a quarter. Hi, if you enjoy watching our daily Tesla report, you'll love our daily Triple Q and SPY reports. They're presented in the same five to 10 minute video format. Our daily SPY and Triple Q analysis provides directional market signals that are correlated with highly specific price support and resistance levels. Whether your trading time horizon is short or longer term, we promise you a distinctive edge in your trading of the SPY and Triple Q. We offer a five day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. So go to wicketstocks.com right now and start receiving your daily SPY and daily Triple Q reports today. Now for the downside, once again, holding below 188.36 maintains an on the defensive dynamic, the market on its heels, despite the fact that it's been in a consolidated framework for the last few days. Um, nonetheless, in reach of 172.92 over the next few days and over the next few weeks, this descending channel bottom at 156.02, where we can place a weekly low. And it can actually be considered part of a range, especially as we move into May trade. This is dropping gradually and will converge 
later May, over the next three or four weeks, with the 146.06 5 8 Fibonacci, which is a 5 8 Fibonacci from the January low against the February high. So this zone is bottom picking territory. I also must include <clears throat> this band of channel support uh, that we settled back above uh, about a, three months ago. Is that three months ago? Yeah, gosh, it doesn't seem like it, but it was. Um, 140, 153, 149.94. So really, 156.02 is the start of a wide zone all the way into the 140s. If I were to hone in right now, it would be 156.02 down to 146.06 as our zone of support. That if you bought 145 out of the money calls or 150 out of the money calls, and that is the play right now, uh, then you would liquidate those for profit. And at that point in time, perhaps turn around and buy 220 out of the money calls that don't expire for at least several months. Because I think following a test of the 140s, this market can turn back up within several months into the 220s. That is kind of the big picture right now. If we were to close back below 141.53, this market shows significant sell signal as we move into the third quarter. I'm really not even going to go there yet. Well, I can go there actually right now and say that this area would be uh, in play again. Actually, it's a better chart here. This is everything on the weekly chart. Closing back below the low 140s, the red arrow turns south on the two to three month time frame. We should break into the 50s or 60s, but <clears throat> no sense in even going there. I don't think it's even realistic. What I do think is realistic right now is that we remain heavy through the rest of April into the 156.02 to 146.06 area, which is our objective. So for the day itself, we've got 188.36 as our ceiling. This is sort of the day trade, being short or selling that in anticipation of 180.54. 180.54 is this the low of this high from uh, last Wednesday uh, is also kind of the low settlement price. I can't remember if it's the actual low or the settlement price itself, but it is our intraday support. It can contain intraday selling pressures. Aggressive day traders can even buy this level, but just know that you're buying sort of contrary to the two to three week directional dynamic right now, which remains negative. But for the day itself, I don't have a problem buying 180.54, whether it's to buy back a short position or actually go long. Uh, rallying back to 188.36 following a test of 180.54 is certainly in the realm of possibility. If we break 180.54, this thing could unwind all the way back to 172.92, which is the low settlement price following the February high, this level able to contain session weakness. If we close below 172.92, in other words, a new low settlement following the February high, that should set the market on a continued bearish path. We could then, if that happens today, actually test 156.02 by Friday's close. That would be quite a high volatility move. I'm not expecting it, but if it did occur today, yes, three to five day target at 156.02. So the three to five day target, the three to five day swing trade right now is being short at 188.36, perhaps buying back at 172.92 over the next few days. And then closing below 172.92, the three to five day swing trade remains negative down to 156.02, where that short position can be bought back. And you can actually go long, not only on the three to five day swing trade, but as I've been mentioning, on the two to three week position trade, the two to three month position trade. This is a solid zone of long-term support that can absorb selling into the third quarter. Upside, if we push or open today above 188.36, we do have a little bit at 191.58, but I think there's a real possibility we can continue all the way into the 195 handle. 195.77 is an area that can also contain buying on a longer-term basis. It's kind of pick your spot. You know, you know, if you recall watching the Tesla report a couple of weeks ago as we were approaching this, this was a bit of a struggle for me. I wanted to call this a significant sell signal at the time, but I couldn't ignore the channel bottom. And so here we are. So bottom line is not unless we close back above 195.77, am I convinced this market wants to rally through the rest of April trade. And so um, what to do in this no man's land between 188.36 and 195.77. If you're a day trader, you're covering that short position and then uh, actually perhaps even going long up to 195.77. That in itself is a decent day trade. So if we push or open above 188.36, 195.77 in reach, 
where we can also top out not only for the week, but even through the balance of April, we could come off of here again in a meaningful way and continue falling into the 140s, 150s. If we do, though, close above 195.77, three to five day swing trade shifts positive up to 207.46. The two to three week position trade shifts positive up to 226.47. There's just a lot going on up here, you've got former channel bottom at 219. You've got the 3.8s at 221 and a quarter. I mean, it's all sort of coming together now uh, over the next few weeks. And if we close the next few days above 195.77, two to three week rally to, I'm going to just say 226.47. 226.47, that's going to be a big test for this market. Could contain buying through the third quarter, possibly the balance of the year. And we could come off from this in a meaningful way. And yet, if we close above 226.47 at the end of any week, good low for the year, longer term bullish continuation than envisioned. And I think that that is really all that needs to be said for this particular uh, Tesla report. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with Tuesdays.